Good morning, South Hills Baptist Church. We're so glad you're here. We hope those of you who were able to make it had a great Sunday at in-person small groups. And those of you online, we hope you are able to engage fully with your groups and spend time in God's Word today. God says that in His presence, there is fullness of joy, and at His right hand, there are pleasures evermore. When we come together, we sense His presence more deeply and profoundly than we do when we worship apart from one another during the week. So let's stand together. Let's join us on lifting our voices to God the King.
Good morning and welcome to church. We're so glad to have you with us. To our members that are here, thank you for being here. To our guests who are with us, we're so glad to have each and every one of you here today. We want to connect with you. We want to get to know you. uh, And we're excited to have you with us. This morning, we got to have small groups in person for the first time in over a year. And yes, it's exciting. And... Uh, Over the last few weeks, and I anticipate in the weeks to come and even in the months to come, that more and more of you who have not been able to come and not been ready to come are now able to come back and be with us in person uh, on Sunday mornings. Thank you to our uh, kids' families for being patient with us through a little bit of uh, uh, technology issues this morning with the check-in system, but we got all of that uh, worked out, and so we're so glad to have Uh, everybody with us today. We're making progress. We're making progress. And God's been in control the whole time. He's not been surprised by it. We're just trying to follow his lead and go where he wants us to go. And as we move forward uh, as a church, we're striving to maximize the effectiveness that we can have for the sake of the gospel Uh, and to discover what it is God wants from us, what direction it is he wants us to go. And we want all of you uh, to be a part of what God's doing here uh, at South Hills Baptist Church. If you're a member or if you're a guest, we want to help you find ways to get plugged in, uh, to get connected in in small groups and worship and discipleship groups and and ministry, serving, outreach, uh, and help you find your place to serve, help you find your niche that matches your interest and what your needs are. Uh, And if you're engaged with us online, that's awesome and wonderful. We want to say thank you for your faithfulness and for your engagement. And and we want you to know that eventually we want you with us here in person as well. And I know many of you want to be here in person as well. So, So when the time is right and when it's wise for you to do so, we encourage you. We've got seats for you. We're ready to welcome you back in person, uh, our church family. We're making progress. We're trying to to move forward. And as we seek to make progress, as we seek to grow as a church, we absolutely must be people of prayer. Listen to what it says in Isaiah chapter 56, verse 7. I will bring them to my holy mountain and let them rejoice in my house of prayer, God says. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices 
will be acceptable on my altar. For the house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. We want to experience a fresh sense of God today in this place. And so in addition to singing together today, we're going to spend some time praying together today. Most weeks I deliver a concentrated sermon from God's Word. And in fact, next week I'm excited about kicking off a brand new sermon series in the book of Nehemiah, the Old Testament book of Nehemiah. So start reading up this week. Start reading and listening and asking God to speak to you and to speak through us as we move through this incredible book that has so many incredible lessons uh, for us, and I'm excited about that. But today, the sermon is, is somewhat going to be preached through the prayers of us engaging together in prayer. Uh, and it's something we're commanded to do constantly in Scripture, to pray continually, to always be in prayer. And, and the Bible is full of prayers uh, and situations that called for prayer and examples of prayer. And we've done this before. And we truly want to strive to create a healthy culture of prayer in our church. And I know it's a little bit different. And I don't know about, about you, but for me, as much as I know I need to depend on prayer and as much as we need prayer uh, to be a foundation, oftentimes I don't feel like I'm doing as much or, or being as effective um, in prayer as I am in maybe actually doing something. And actually engaging in something or helping someone or teaching something or, or accomplishing a, a physical task. But prayer is the greatest task that we have. Prayer is the greatest weapon. Prayer is the greatest access we have to tap into the power of God and for, for who He is. And as we encounter God in prayer, it awakens our souls to a greater sense of His character and His activity in our lives. It wakes us up to, to who God is and what he's about and where he's at work in our lives. And prayer in all of its simplicity is communicating with God. And communicating is talking and listening and connecting with him on a deeper level of dependence. You see, the more that we prioritize prayer, the deeper our faith in God will be, the more attuned we're going to be to his purpose in our lives. So the more that we pray, the deeper we depend upon God, the better we understand how and where God's at work in our lives. And one of my favorite aspects of prayer is praise. Is praise. Celebrating who God is and celebrating what he's done. And we're going to celebrate God in prayer this morning. And our first segment of prayer and time of prayer that we're going to share together is going to be a segment of prayer uh, in the area of praise. And, and just to give you uh, some examples, I, I want to celebrate. I want, I've got a few testimonies that have been written out and been given to me uh, by some of our church members. And I want you to hear a handful of testimonies from some of our church members who are celebrating what God's done in their life. To give you an example, to spark some praise in our hearts this morning. And then we're going to pray together uh, in praise. But I want you to listen to a few of these brief testimonies of how God's working and, and how members of our church are seeing and experiencing and recognizing God's work and activity uh, in their lives. The first is from, from John and Allison Cummings. They say getting pregnant with baby number three didn't happen easily or by accident. We didn't just jump on the bandwagon of having one of those COVID babies. About a year and a half ago, we felt our family was missing something. John and I prayed and we talked about what we felt was missing. We felt like we were being called to expand our family. So naturally, we came up with our own timeline of when we wanted things to happen. I, Allison speaking, am a planner, after all. After over a year of trying and not getting pregnant, we thought that it just wasn't the journey we thought that we were called to. But we continued to pray through it all. Even through the sorrow, we could still rejoice in the fact that we already have two amazing girls, Taylor and Madison. Then an amazing thing happened. God answered our prayer in his time. And we're getting to witness the miracle of life that we're now expecting baby number three in August. Celebrate the goodness of God in your life. Celebrate what he's doing in your life. Recognize his character. Here's another one from Maggie Bercy, one of our members. 
She's gone through a lot of trials this year. She's a nurse, trainer, training nurses at JPS Health System. And last year was a big test of her faith. Between helping COVID patients, struggling with diagnosed PTSD, her faith, she says, was greatly tested. And she says, praise God for bringing me closer to him. He tested my faith, yet he never left me. I took comfort in his word. I talked to him every night. It brought me closer to family and friends, and it gave me the freedom to talk to, uh, talk to them about Jesus. Praise and glory to God. Amen. Celebrate what God's teaching you and what he's showing you and how he's growing you in your faith. Here's another one. From David Wilson, he says, the past year's been tough, lots of ups and downs, both professionally and personally. Getting laid off for a second time in five years. Finding that there's very little need for facility managers in this new time period is difficult and challenging. And having to change careers completely is scary, especially after seeing others my age struggle not finding jobs. But I had faith God would take care of us like he did the first time I was laid off. Trusting God won't give us more than he can handle, but also knowing he sometimes chooses to stretch our limits. So I took a leap of faith, and I started a new career path helping people buy and sell real estate and trusting him to take care of us. We were blessed to be kept well and healthy uh, so far. We're also blessed to have Rebecca complete her time in the Navy and come home safely. We now have all of our family back together. While we're far from being out of this valley, it's easier knowing that God is there with us. Even when you don't feel like you're completely on the other side of the, the struggle and the difficulty in the valley of your life, you can still celebrate the goodness and praise God for who he is and how he's proven himself to be faithful in the midst of your difficult struggles of life. I, I've got one more that I want to share with you this morning. This is from Lauren Elwell. We made the transition in schooling models three weeks before spring break. We struggled with it, but it was exactly what God uh, yearned us to do. And the time spent with family was just uh, teaching in school. It wasn't quality time, making memories, hanging out as a family. The other challenging thing was my night shift and becoming a full-time working mom again. Our schedules are difficult to juggle with a firefighter that works every third day and a night nurse that works from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. and having to work around Jonathan's schedule. But he made himself known through a godly babysitter and is available for the kids whenever we need her. And through many times that he made evident to us that this is the season he wanted us in. Time, a priceless and most important commodity. Not just taking advantage of every second, she says, but being present. God has shown me the ever importance and breakthrough of Deuteronomy 6, 7 through 9 with our kids. And how priceless even our ride to school has been and the look on our kids' faces when they understand how good God is and how deep their questions get with the time that I would usually be eager to close their door at bedtime and the glimpse of their growth as our teachings are seen in the way that they interact with others and with each other. The seconds that usually would have been written off as just get peace time with my phone, with sleep, or even with distractions, have exponentially grown positively for their future. We have so many reasons to praise God. If we'll open our eyes and our ears and our hearts and our minds to the Lord, He will show us that when, when things are good, He's good. When things are bad, He's good. When things aren't going our way, He's working out His way. When things may be going exactly the way we think they should be, God's still working out His way. We have so many ways, so many opportunities to praise God. And I want us this morning to take a moment and practically live this out in prayer. Take a moment to personally pray. And praise God. Celebrate with God in your heart as we pray together. Something God's done in your life. Something special. Something meaningful. Something significant. And just personally praise God. Celebrate something he's done in your life 
recently. Just spend a moment praising. Whatever you can think about, whatever comes to mind, give him praise, give him glory in your heart as you connect with him, as you talk to him and listen to him in this moment. And then I'm going to voice a prayer publicly for all of us in praise, and we're going to continue to sing together. Will you join me in prayer? And let's gather together in praise and in celebration and rejoice and recognize who God is and what he's doing and what he's done in your life. Pray with us in this moment. Father, we want to celebrate you. We want to say thank you for all the wonderful ways you're working in our lives. God, make us aware. Maybe if we're struggling to say, I'm I'm, I'm trying to, to find some specific ways, some specific things to say thank you and to praise you for today, God, that you'd open our hearts and minds to you that we might see it. Thank you for these testimonies and those who are willing to, to share them and be vulnerable about some of the things that are happening in their lives. God, we want to lift your name high today. We want to rejoice in who you are. We want to praise you. We want to praise you for being faithful when we're not faithful. We want to praise you for working out some difficult situations in our lives. We want to to praise you for allowing us to to be healthy today, to be able to to hopefully, for for those of us that, that still have our jobs today, that still able to to go to school and learn and and make good grades and still have friends. We praise you and thank you, God, that we're finally starting to be able to get to enjoy some of the things that we've missed out on in this last year of the pandemic, whether it be concerts or plays or sports or family and friend gatherings, going into a movie theater and sit down and watch a movie and God, thank you for digging some deeper trenches of faith in our life so that you can fill them with your goodness. May we never stop being people of praise. May we never stop recognizing the magnitude of the glory of the gospel that we've experienced through Jesus Christ, who died for us and rose again and conquered death. So that by your grace, we can conquer life and experience abundant life in you. God, we praise you. We praise you in the good. We praise you in the bad. We praise you in the the, the known and the unknown. We praise you in the easy and the difficult. And I hope that we'll not only praise you in the church, but we'll praise you in the streets and praise you in our jobs and praise you in our homes. We want to give you the glory today. Make us people of prayer. Give us hearts of praise for you so that it can change our perspective on how we view life and how we understand you and how we know you. And so, God, we offer up praise today from our hearts and our lives, and we want to give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you please stand?
hearts to him. Lord Jesus, have your way with us. We are standing in your light, and our hearts are open wide. Let us see more than before. Lord, come have your way here. Oh, we surrender all to you. Do what you want to. Do what you want to. God, we love to see. So as I said in the beginning, our desire is to see God do a mighty work in our lives and through our church, and I believe that prayer is going to be the catalyst that allows that to happen, tapping in to God's Spirit, being consumed by Him. But along with prayer, as we pray, we must pursue the mission that God has for us, the mission that God's given us if we want to see Him work mightily. Coupled with prayer is our pursuit of the mission. Listen uh, to our mission. Listen to what Jesus commanded us to do after he resurrected and prior to ascending and going back to heaven uh, where he came from when he came to be our substitute for sin on the cross. In Matthew chapter 28, 18 through 20, Jesus came near and said to them, we call this the great commission. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And remember, I'm with you always to the end of the age. Helping people find and follow Jesus. That's the mission. That's the vision. That's what the Great Commission is all about. That's what God commands us to be. People of God, people of Christ, followers of Christ, who are helping people find and follow Jesus. And this mission comes from God. It comes from His Word, leading people to faith in Jesus and leading people to grow in their faith. In Jesus. Now, you can phrase it however you want. You can 
can give it its own catchy little phrase or theme or whatever, but at the end of the day, the mission of the church and the mission of God's people comes down to evangelism and discipleship, proclaiming the gospel, telling people about Christ and how to follow him and how to have their lives dramatically changed by his grace, and discipleship, helping believers that have come to know Christ to mature and grow and develop in their faith. And my primary role as pastor, my primary responsibility is to lead his church to fulfill the God-given mission that he gives us in Scripture. And God's call on our staff is to come alongside me, to come alongside us, so that together we can fulfill the mission that God has for us. And we're dependent upon God to give us that mission to lead his church, to fulfill that mission. We're dependent on God to lead us in the direction that he wants us to go. Now, we're not seeking to serve in our own strength. We're not seeking to lead in our own strength. We're not depending on our own wisdom to know the way. And I, along with our staff, we're responsible for the vision of the church. I'm responsible for leading out in the vision of the church. And I know that if it's going to be effective, it has to come from God. If it's going to be effective, it has to be undergirded and sustained with prayer. And sometimes the direction that we feel like God is leading us doesn't always align with our own preferences or expectations. It most certainly doesn't always align with everyone in the church's expectations and everyone's preferences. Often the decisions and implementing these decisions comes with great challenges and great difficulty. But the purpose in all of it, the desire in all of it, is to effectively lead the church to fulfill the mission that God's given us in his word. Because ultimately we're striving to be as effective as we can for the kingdom of God. And in order for that to happen, I stand today and confess that we need your prayers. We need you to pray for us. We need you to come alongside us in prayer for the mission and in pursuing the mission and fulfilling the mission because we're in this together. We need your faithful. We need your empowering. We need your unselfish prayers. One of the absolute greatest blessings as a pastor And as your pastor is knowing that church members are praying for me. Because I need it. If there's anything I need, the greatest need that I have is for God's people to be praying for me. Praying that I'll have wisdom. Praying that I'll have strength. Praying that I'll have the protection that I need from myself and others around me. To lead the way God's called me to lead. To fulfill the mission that he's called us to fulfill. And I, say, I think the, same, the staff would say the same, that they need your prayers. We need your prayers more than anything. And in a few moments, in our, in our final segment of prayer, in a few moments after we sing uh, again, we're going to seek God's wisdom together as a church on how we can best implement the vision. But now in this moment, I want to call us to prayer for our leadership, for us. And I'm asking you to pray for us. We stand before you humble. We stand before you hopeful, ready and willing to serve in the way that God's called us to serve, to lead in the way that God's called us to lead, and to go where God's called us to go. And we recognize it's only by God's power, it's only by God's guidance that we can accomplish the mission that he's given us. We need grace. We need strength. We need wisdom from God to carry out his purpose in his church. And every one of you plays a huge role in the success of the mission of our church through prayer. So with the mission in mind, the mission of helping people find and follow Jesus, will you pray with us and for us to be empowered by God and to be led 
But God, I'm asking you specifically to pray for me, your pastor. I'm specifically asking you to pray for Aaron, our worship and discipleship pastor. I'm asking you to pray specifically for Andy, our student and outreach pastor who's transitioning to outreach and connections pastor. And even ask you to be faithfully praying uh, for the upcoming student uh, leader, kids leader, who we're seeking to hire and bring onto our staff to lead in those areas of ministry. And so I want to call us to a time of prayer. Call us to a time of prayer of asking God for what we need, for our staff, for our leadership. And after we personally pray and petition before the Lord, Lisa Nanny, our personnel chair, is going to come and lead us publicly in a prayer in that way. So I'm calling us to prayer again this morning. In these next couple of moments, take time, if you will, and just pray for the leadership of our church, for me and for Andy and for Aaron. That God would put his hand upon us, that he would give us the wisdom that we need, and that he would empower us to lead the way God's called us to lead. Will you join us in prayer? together this morning and I just ask that you still our hearts prepare us Father as we commit to pray for our staff Lord I lift up the two open positions that we have for our student pastor and our children's minister and Lord that wherever they are right now you know who they are we we don't yet but I pray that this morning you stir in their hearts you continue to draw them closer to you. And Father, for you to start showing them the vision as they <clears throat> will be joining us hopefully soon. Lord, we lift them up and we commit to pray for those positions that will, will love on and minister to our children and our students and their families. Father, I pray for our staff wives. Um, Father, they are so much the strength and the encouragement behind our staff. Father, I pray that you give them boldness and grace and patience, Father, and the many, the many things that they need to support and encourage and love and lead in the home. Father, I pray for their families, that, that you would just be, bring peace to their houses, um, Father, and, and help them on the home front. Lord, I pray for Andy as he transitions into this new position uh, as Connections Pastor and, and help him uh, to be bold and, Father, to, to seek you in your direction. Father, as he seeks to lead us in how we relate to our community and the opportunities we, to ha we have to share Jesus in our community, Father, 
he will lead us in that, but we are to walk beside him and to come alongside. So, Father, I pray for him. I pray for his health and his strength and his vision in, in you and his time with you. Lord, I lift up Aaron. I thank you for his leadership and worship and in our discipleship classes. Father, I pray that you give him a freshness and an, an excitement and a joy and guidance as, as so many things have changed. We've all learned the, in the last year all of the change that takes place. And as we've changed in our jobs and our, our homes, they also are having to make big changes in ministry and how we, we are ministering to each other as well as our community. Um, after the pandemic and through this this time and how we reach people differently. But Jesus, you haven't changed and your word has not changed among this. And so, Father, I pray for a boldness um, and for new vision and insight as, as Aaron seeks and leading us in worship and leading us in, in how we grow in Christ. And Father, I pray for Pastor Chris. Um, Father, you you put him in this role to lead our church, to lead out, um, and to, to see the vision and execute on that vision. And so, Father, again, we, we don't need to just look to him to lead um, and expect him to do it by himself. We need to come along with him and come along beside him and first to pray for him and to do that, not just this morning, but to, to continue to do that each day, praying for our staff. Pray for Chris as, as he seeks you and his relationship with you and, and Father, the vision that you have for this church. Lord, we lift up the staff and we pray for them and we commit to pray for them. It's in Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. Would you stand again, please?
his throne. Come, let us adore him. Behold our King. Nothing can compare. Come, let us adore him. Ready for action. There is no fear, cause I believe. There is no doubt, cause I have seen your faithfulness. My fortress over and over. So we always need to spend time praising God in prayer and celebrating Him. Uh, that's important, giving Him thanks. It's important to pray for the needs of others, intercede for others, and ask God to, to work on behalf 
of others. But it's also God to, it's good to ask God for what we need in prayer. To ask God for what we need. Share our needs with Him. Because God wants to provide for us. Think about this for a second. If you could ask God for anything, what would you ask for? Think about that for a second. If you could ask God for anything, what is it that you would ask for? I'm sure if we had time to share and hear those responses, we would hear a wide variety of requests. And and what's cool is way back in the Old Testament, thousands of years ago, King Solomon got this opportunity. And it's inspiring what he asked for. Now, Solomon was uh, the the king of Israel, uh, and he was the son of King David. We all know about David and, uh, and David's story. And David and Bathsheba had a son, and that's Solomon, and he took over the throne after David. And David had asked God to let him build the temple. And God said, no, I'm going to let your son Solomon build the temple. So Solomon had a big task ahead of him. Solomon uh, had a lot uh, to take on in his life and as king. And, I, and in 1 Kings chapter 3, I want you to check out this encounter that Solomon had with God. Beginning in verse 5, it says that Gibeon, the Lord, appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. And God said, ask, what should I give you? And Solomon replied, you've shown great and faithful love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, righteousness, and integrity. You've continued this great and faithful love for him by giving him a son to sit on the throne as it is today. Lord my God, you have now made your servant king in my father David's place, yet I'm just a youth with no experience in leadership. Your servant is among your people. You have chosen a people too many to be numbered or counted. So give your servant a receptive heart to judge your people and to discern between good and evil. For who is able to judge this great people of yours? Now it pleased the Lord that Solomon had requested this. And so God said to him, because you've requested this and did not ask for long life, or riches for yourself, or the death of your enemies. Now, let's be honest here. Some of us probably thought about maybe at least one of those things. But you asked discernment for yourself to administer justice. I'll therefore do what you've asked. I'll give you a wise and understanding heart. So there's never been anyone like you before and never will be again. In addition, I'll give you what you did not ask for, both riches and honor, so that no king will be your equal during your entire life. If you walk in my ways and keep my statutes and commands just as your father David did, I'll give you a long life. So God came to Solomon and said, ask, what should I give you? It's kind of like a blank check. Kind of like a free wish. He could have asked for anything. For wealth. For power. For beautiful women. And what does he ask for? He asks for wisdom. He asks for discernment. You see, Solomon was so enamored with God... And the undeserving opportunity that he was given to be king of Israel. He was just in awe of God. I can't believe you've given me this opportunity. God, it's all for your glory. That he wanted nothing more than to glorify God. And to be as effective as he could be. I can relate to Solomon in that way. He knew he didn't have the wisdom. He didn't have the military experience. He didn't have all the the skills and training that were needed to lead effectively. He was aware of his limitations. And he had the perspective that it was better to lead, to be led by God than to use his own power and his own authority to lead. Solomon wanted an obedient, wise heart for the Lord. That's what he prayed for. For an obedient, wise 
heart for the Lord. Of all the requests that, that I could make of God. I, I've come to realize that this should be one of my primary prayers before God. God, give me a wise and obedient heart for you. I mean, I want people to come to faith in Jesus Christ. I want people to grow in their faith. I want our church to grow. I want my family to prosper. I want my family to be protected. There's nothing wrong with those things. Those are all good things. There's many, many other things that I want, many, many other things that I pray for and that I ask for and that I seek God for. But, but I'm realizing that, that we're so much more likely to get where we desire to go if we have an obedient, wise heart for the Lord. And we need to pray for wise and obedient hearts. And if I'm primarily praying and we're primarily praying for wise and obedient hearts, then God will give us the wisdom to find the most effective way to help see more people come to know Jesus. If we pray for the wisdom of the Lord and follow the wisdom of the Lord and live with obedient hearts to Him, then He's going to help us and others grow in their faith in Jesus. He's going to help our church grow. He's going to help our families prosper. He's going to help us with all these desires of our heart. See, wise, obedient hearts are going to help us discover the best ways to help people find and follow Jesus. If we want to fulfill the mission of helping people find and follow Jesus, we're going to have to have wise and obedient hearts before the Lord. You see, our potential for growth, our potential for effectiveness is going to flow from wisdom and discernment from God. And we need effective strategies moving forward as a church. But we need wisdom to know which strategies. We need wisdom to know which programs, which opportunities to take advantage of, which people to engage, what places to go and minister. And so in our closing time of prayer this morning, I want us to collectively pray for wisdom. God, give us wise and obedient hearts. For you. God, give us wise and obedient hearts for you so that we can best discover how to implement the mission of helping people find and follow Jesus. Because I'm so thankful the way that Lisa prayed earlier, that it's not just up to me or just up to our staff to do the work of the ministry and to accomplish the mission. We're all called to accomplish the mission, and we all need to discover in the wisdom of God what our role is and what our place is in fulfilling that mission and implementing that mission. And so, so I want you uh, in this time of prayer to ask God for wisdom to know how and where God wants to use you in this church to help people find and follow Jesus. And ask God for all of us to see the vision and embrace the vision that he has for us. And I, I want you to pray, God, how can I give me the wisdom to know how I can serve, how I can give, how I can contribute to fulfilling this specific mission that you've given us of helping people find and follow Jesus. And after a moment of prayer, Andy's going to come and he's going to lead us corporately and praying specifically that God would give us wisdom individually and corporately that we can help best discover how to help people find Jesus. And then Aaron's going to lead us in prayer to help us have the wisdom and obedience to help people follow Jesus. Because that's our mission. And we're all in it together. But we can't depend on our own strength. We can't depend on our own experience. We need to seek the Lord and let him show us. And let him lead us. And let him empower us to do so. Will you join us in prayer as we pray? God, give us wise and obedient hearts for you. Show us specifically what it is you're calling us to do and how it is you're calling us to serve individually personally asking God to speak into your own heart and into your own life let's pray together
Father, we thank you that we can come boldly before your throne. We give you thanks and praise. God, we thank you more importantly that we can be a part of the body of Christ and that each of us have a part to play. But God, you've called us all to be preachers in some way, and that's to help people find Jesus. God, what that looks like is us sharing our testimony, and all that is is sharing what you've done in our lives. God, I thank you for uh, what you've done in, in the lives that we've heard. But God, everyone sitting in here, everyone watching online, God, you've had, you've had a part to play in their life. You're driving their life. You're focusing them. And God, that's what I ask for us. Give us focus. Help us to make the most of every opportunity privately and corporately. God, as we're walking down the street, whatever it is we're doing in life, I pray that we would take the opportunity and share Christ with them. Tell them how you have experienced. Uh, tell them how we have experienced you. The difference you've made in our life. God, I pray that also as a church, that you would help us to focus not necessarily on programs and ministries, but what we need to do in our community to share the love of Christ. And God, as we share you through meeting physical needs and practical needs, I pray that we would have the opportunity to share the gospel. And God, I pray that your Holy Spirit would go ahead of us and set up those appointments. And not only that, I pray that, they, that you and through your Holy Spirit would turn their hearts toward you. It is by the power of Christ we pray. Amen. Lord Jesus, we trust you. We trust you to finish the work that you started when you called us to faith and drew us to you. Thank you, God, for giving us your spirit in this dark world that we live in so that we are able to grow in the knowledge and understanding of your word, but that we are also able to draw near to your heart and understand how deep your love is for this world. So that we may grow into mature, committed, effective believers. That we would not have faith that is useless, but faith that is useful in your kingdom. Lord Jesus, help us then to take that usefulness and to influence others for your glory, to make disciples of people where we live, where we work, where we play, even people in our families. Lord Jesus, help us to grow into strong believers who will follow you even when life gets difficult and be able to say and sing praises as we already heard here today. Lord Jesus, thank you for this church that you call us to come here and to grow together so that we may be deployed for your glory Work through us to bring many people to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Congregation, please stand as we sing one last song.
God's only Son, Jesus, Jesus, no other name is right on to say, Jesus, Jesus. Amen. Please be seated. Thanks for worshiping with us online this week. We hope that it has been a meaningful time to equip you for the good work that God has for you. My prayer for each of you is first that you will seek the Lord throughout this week, that you may abide in his presence and remain in his word. Second, my prayer is that you will reach out to us via text, email, phone, or our digital response card found at southhillsbc.org slash respond. You can share your desire to become a Christian, request to join the church or be baptized, share a testimony or a prayer request, or ask a staff member to contact you during the week. If you'd like to engage in one of our small groups via Zoom, please contact me for the invite code. Also, if you'd like to take your faith deeper and get involved in an in-person disciple-making microgroup, whether as a leader or a participant, please contact me as I'd love to assist finding you a group that is right for you. Don't forget to check out our YouTube channel for previous sermons and worship sets. Finally, please share your email address with us to receive our weekly Sunday morning digital bulletin. Thanks again.